sa lahat ng bagay kailangan meron kang isang isa sa kripisyo. Ano nga bang uunahin mo bilang ina? Yung buhay na binuo nyo o yung buhay na meron ka? This thought came from one of the respondents of our study who was narrating her experiences during distance learning. We found out that whenever the student mothers are choosing between education and the welfare of her baby, education never wins. This our sacrifice can be associated to kin selection theory, which is one of the sociobiological theories that we studied in this paper. Good morning, everyone. We are STEM students from Kainta Senior High School, Kainta District. It's my honor to present to you all our study entitled Experiences of Student Mothers During Distance Learning, a Social Biological Perspective. I'm Kenzie Ovellanos, the presenter of the group, and my co-researchers are Christine Reyes, Kimberly Tamayo, and Casey Villaganes. Teenage pregnancy always been looked as problem in our society. Issues and roots of this phenomenon are always left unheard or unspoken because it has been normalized or taken for granted. When schools were forced to close due to pandemic, the cases of teenage pregnancy increased. Also, implementation of remote learning had brought some negative effects on students, more so to student mothers. Even DepEd Secretary Lino Riones even said that teenage pregnancy could already be considered as one of the main reasons why children are dropping out of school. In Kainta Senior High School alone, there are 58 cases of teenage moms who juggle with their parenting duties and studies and other among roles in life. This study needs to answer what are the significant experiences of student mothers in Kainta Senior High School during distance learning, and how can these experiences can be analyzed through a sociobiological perspective. You might notice that there are a lot of studies that were conducted about teenage pregnancy or student mothers. But what this study make it unique? This study focuses on social biological perspective and its possible connection to experiences of student mothers during distance learning. Here we try to frame the narratives of student mothers with different social biological theories, namely kin selection theory, evolutionary life history theory, and self-regulation theory. First, evolutionary life history theory is anchored from the principle of natural selections by Charles Darwin. It essentially states that early reproduction can be correlated to harsh environment, while self-regulation theory is involves feedback system of self-regulation, coping procedure, and problem solving. And lastly, kin selection theory is evolutionary strategy that favors on reproductive success of organisms' relatives, even at the cost of organisms' own survival and reproduction. As I've said earlier, there are a lot of studies that were conducted about teenage pregnancy or student mothers, but they are more on a statistical report rather than experiences. So we use qualitative type of research for us to capture the essence of their stories or their experiences. Phenomenological research design because we created teams from their narratives that they have shared. We had seven student mothers who shared their stories. Morse in 1994 suggested that at least six respondents for, for a phenomenological research design. So we used or we had seven respondents because we wanted to ensure the richness of the data that we would get from them. For us to help to choose the respondents, we created four criteria. And the first in the criteria is they must be a student mother. They should be around 16 to 20 years old. They should be currently enrolled in school. And lastly, they must be willing to participate in the study. We also use proposed sampling technique in identifying our respondents because we believe that they're the ones who are most fitted in the data that we need. Before looking for participants, we sought the permission of our research teachers. After that, we looked for respondents and gave them the informed consent form and parents' consent form. We asked them for the preferred time, place, and platform for our focus group discussion. The virtual focus group discussion held on April 7, 2022 at Kainta Senior High School Computer Laboratory. There are three teachers who validated the interview guide which was adapted and modified 
from the study of Earth in 2013. We also address potential ethical issues since the subject is considered as sensitive. For the data analysis, we, we use IPA or interpretative phenomenological analysis because it intends to look on how student models making sense to their personal and social world during distance learning. To strengthen the validity of the teams, we use the seven step on Colise seven step method, wherein we ask the respondents to validate the teams that we extracted from their narratives through their personal messengers. And there are four teams that were extracted from their narratives, and these are struggles in managing their dual goals, motivation for success through education, prioritizing baby's welfare, and lastly, people involvement before, during, and after pregnancy. In the original copy of our paper, we even supported these teams with their personal narratives. Apart from the teams that we gathered from the respondents, we found out that there are social biological theories that we can use to analyze their behavior or why they behave the way they do. Social biology is the systematic study of how natural selection shapes the biological basis of all social behaviors. Social biologists predict that mothers will care for their child more than fathers. In our study, all of the student mothers have the custody of their child, providing the nourishment and support to the child, proving the prediction of social biologists. Caring and helping is evident when it involves in child, parents, and spouse, and other close relations. Key selection theory is evident in the narratives of student mothers. Whether they wanted to finish studies or wanted to work, this shows deep care and affection. Life situation where in student mothers do not have internet load to download necessary learning materials, struggle with their time and finances, confuse with their roles, and sacrifice one task to perform one another. It all points out the evolutionary life history to you, which correlates that early pregnancy and parenting to hardships in life. While self-regulation can be also seized from the narratives of the student mothers. Student mothers became problem solvers when they faced difficult situations in their life, such as balancing their time with their child and academics. This research is framed on social biological perspective, affirms that student mothers are struggling with their multiple roles in life. Therefore, we suggest that academic institution may offer consideration in their academic workloads, such as providing printed modular program, lessening school requirements, and counseling services. Studies may also concentrate on best practices school may give to improve the welfare of the student mothers. Furthermore, the, this research may shed light in better understanding of why student mothers behave the way they do and could possibly propose socially appropriate programs to empower them and protect their welfare. Further research could be done to the social biological foundation of this paper, especially if the expert and policy makers would like to possibly apply the result of this research in crafting the inventions to curb the school dropouts due to adolescent pregnancy and parenting. With all that, I am ending my research presentation. Thank you for listening and stay safe, everyone.